Actually, you know, I'm just gonna play some old levels because, like, the rest are just challenges and stuff. I'll do the challenges and stuff in my next gameplay where I'm not gonna be talking too much. Mainly just to finish them so I can continue onward. But I'm only doing this just this so I can talk about a few things. And then, you know. And then basically just move on, basically. So. I guess we could say that. We're done with the. Talking about My Little Pony. So. Now I want to talk about. The, uh, just politics. I want to talk about the, uh, the primaries. So as you know, the primaries are still going. There's going to be a whole lot of primaries in, in May, June, and even August, like important ones. And I'm really hoping the progressives would win these races, you know. So looking forward to the West Virginia primary on May 8th. And also there's others on May 8th, so I'll be looking forward for those that are gonna happen. But the one thing I actually wanna comment on and is that the prospect of vote splitting basically. So as you know, there are a ton of progressives that are running in house districts and stuff that obviously would split the vote in the pursuit of a uh, corporate Democrat actually rising to the top. And this, a and this has actually happened before uh, in my state of Florida, no less. So. What happened was that Alan Grayson was running for the Florida House seat while uh, his campaign manager or campaign staffer, I think it's Susanna Randolph, was also running. But he actually also had his wife, Dina Grayson, also run for his old House seat. And they were both running along with Darren Soto, who happens to be a corporate Democrat, also running. And so what happened was, because there were two progressive ru progressives running in the same district, they splitted the vote and allowed Darren Soto to win the primary. And then he then became, you know, the current House member of Orlando. So that's what I'm saying, is that if there is a prospect... Uh, like, here's the thing, and, and this time today is August, uh, today's April. I'm saying this right now, is that whoever... Whoever is a progressive, like the strongest progressive running, the other progressives should drop out and, al and allow that, pro that strong progressive to run and face off against either a corporate Democrat or in the general election because you ca we can't afford to have vote splitters literally like ruining the chances of go going in the Senate or in the House, you know, to help Bernie Sanders if he ever becomes president or Tulsi Gabbard or whatever. Uh, progressive candidate <clears throat> for the presidency, basically. So what I'm trying to say is that, as you know, there's a California primary, and there's and I'm rooting for Allison Hartson to go on the runoff. Now, unfortunately, there are tons of other progressives, along with uh, Kevin De Leon, you know, running for the Senate against Dianne Feinstein. Now the problem is that Kevin De Leon, he's kind of a pseudo progressive to be honest. Well, like he he is, he's not as corporatist as say Dianne Feinstein. He's still not as progressive as you know Allison Hardson or oh shit uh, or uh, be careful that sludge uh, or that sludge whatever. I wasn't reading too well. Okay, he's not as progressive as, say, like, Alison Hartson or even, uh, David Hillebrand, another progressive running. So what I'm trying to say is that both of these candidates should drop out if they want to go in the runoff against Dianne Feinstein. Because here's what I'm afraid is that if, say, Kevin De Leon does win in the run- like, go against the runoff against Dianne Feinstein, I, if I was in California, I would definitely vote for Kevin De Leon over Dianne Feinstein. But the problem is that a lot of progressives won't be able to, are probably not going to vote for this guy because, like I said, he's a pseudo progressive. So there, therefore, they won't unite like with him, and that's going to give Dianne Feinstein the California election, basically, and we'll have her for six years or until she dies, and, and that's not good. So what I'm trying to say is that honestly, Kevin De Leon should just drop out, like, because he he will literally he's literally damaging progressive chances, the progressives' chances on retaking the California Senate. So 
Honestly, all the other progressives should probably drop out, including Kevin DeLeon, and, and just unite alongside Allison Hartson. Just for, I mean, for the good of the country and also for the good of humanity, because because Dianne Feinstein is also really hawkish on foreign policy, and you know, so I'm just saying, for the good of of everything that's good, you know, you, you have to have Allison Hartson, you know, go in the runoff or win outright. I wouldn't mind also if it was her versus any other progressive, but it's like Dianne Feinstein is the number one enemy that we have to focus on. I'm gonna do the red coins now. So... And also, here's the thing about pseudo-progressives. I mean, as you know, like I said, about... Uh, Kevin and Leon are pseudo-progressive. So what is pseudo-progressive? Well, pseudo-progressive is basically someone that... would advocate at, like, is for progressive policies, but has some sympathy for the establishment, and is not as, say, progressive as, say, Bernie Sanders, you know? So... Excuse me. So, like, examples of super progressives like, you know, Al Franken, who, even though wasn't like, you know, was a comedian and stuff and won the Senate election, was still like, you know, an establishment sympathizer. He actually like endorsed Hillary over Bernie, even way before, even after he won uh, the Minnesota primary. So it just shows you that this guy, I mean, he wasn't, he, he honestly wasn't really progressive and I'm actually glad that, glad that he's out of the Senate, honestly, because like this guy is just, you know, fucking useless. So, another pseudo-progressive that I think he is probably a pseudo-progressive is uh, Beto O'York from, uh, from uh, Texas, but actually here's the thing, I'd rather vote for a pseudo-progressive in a red state, you know, than like, you know, a corporate Democrat, like, for instance, obviously I didn't, I actually, I didn't, I didn't want Doug Jones to win in Alabama because he's obviously a corporate Democrat, not even a pseudo-progressive, I would, I would have been fine if he was a pseudo-progressive. And another example of a pseudo-progressive is John Lewis, and if you guys are wondering why John Lewis, well, because one, he sided with Hillary Clinton and didn't even endorse Bernie, even though he was the one that marched in Selma while, while Hillary was just a fucking, like, Goldwater girl, you know, campaigning for a racist candidate. So, so basically, John Lewis is a fucking traitor, you know. You know, he, 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 uh, he's obviously, like, a, a, a pseudo-progressive and, you know, really, you know, cares more about the establishment than electing progressives. So fuck John Lewis. And also another thing is that he also endorsed a corporate Democrat to run for the uh, Florida governor's race, which is uh, Gwen Graham, who is the daughter of the previous governor, uh, Bob Graham. And I'm actually hoping it's Andrew Gillum who actually wins uh, the primary. And I don't know if this guy, he actually might also be a pseudo-progressive because he also endorsed Hillary instead of Bernie. But regardless, pseudo-progressive, I'd rather take a pseudo-progressive than a corporate democrat, basically. So, so I'm just, I just really can't believe that he would rather, that John Lewis would support, like, you know, a corporate democrat over a, a literal, like, you know, at least a, a pseudo-progressive like, you know, Andrew Gillum. Uh, so anyway, um, so yeah, and so, but though about the Florida governor's race, even if Gwen Graham actually wins the primary, which I hope she doesn't, I'd still vote for her because, um, one, like, the state has been controlled by so many Republicans that, like, you know, there needs to be a, a Democrat in office for Florida in order to, you know, fix some of the problems, basically. Now, that's not, that doesn't ring true in terms of the, of the national politics, because, like, you know, nationally, uh, I'm against, uh, I won't vote for any corporate Democrat, but for, you know, but only for progressives, but for the Florida, for a local race, like in Florida, there's an exception to that. I guess the only time I wouldn't vote for even a corporate Democrat in a local race for governorship would be for a candidate that is against, you know, open primaries or like, you know, not for 
for good vote, like for decent voting and stuff. Or if, or if, if, if uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz decides to run for governor. Yeah, if she decides to, if she was like, say, if she decides to run for governorship and she was a nominee, then yeah, I'm not gonna fucking vote for her. You know, even if she is against a, a, a nasty Republican. So what else? What else? Uh, let's see. So another also, you know, important candidate to beat is also Nancy Pelosi, who, who like you know is also who's running against several progressive Democrats. One Green Party member and one Green Party candidate and uh, and one Republican, unfortunately. So the one thing I'm actually afraid of is that they will like split the votes and allow a Republican to enter the runoff. So I'm literally hoping that all these these other you know candidates would just would just support um, Jason Chaffe, who's who's basically the strongest candidate to to run against Nancy Pelosi. And like to support him, so then he could then not only beat Nancy Pelosi, but also beat the one person that would that is the uh, House Minority Leader for the Democrats. That would send huge shockwaves. But unfortunately, it won't happen if these progressives are running and they're going to split the votes to allow you know Nancy Pelosi to walk off scot free. So I'm literally hoping. I mean, here's the thing though, if. The Republicans drop out, if that Republican drops out and it's just the progressive running and only the progressives, then yeah, I, I support the primary then. Like, you know, they can run however they want because they would still be able to have a progressive at least challenge her. But because there's a Republican in the, in the race, it makes things more complicated. So that's what I'm concerned about. So I'm thinking of what to do next. Maybe I'll do- I guess I'll probably do the beach thing, I guess. I don't know. I'll probably do the beach thing, do the sandbird, you know? So, that's what I'm kind of afraid of. Like, you know, I'm telling you, Nancy Pelosi has got to go, and if she goes, and it's gonna improve the Democrats' chances, but... It's not gonna happen if those fucking- if the other progressives are gonna split- knowingly split the vote. And same is true in California, in the Senate race. So that's what I'm saying. Because this ha this actually has happened, you know, uh, like I said, in, that, in the Florida House race. And it kind of happened, I think. Oh, this is the melon challenge. I think I could do this. I think it also happened in the governor's race in Illinois. I don't know if literally... Uh, Kennedy split the votes from Daniel Biss, but uh, if he was out of the race, I don't know if those Kennedy voters would have voted for Pritzker. That's basically his name, you know, so I don't I don't know about the vote splitting about that. It probably did happen, but if that's true, then that's what I'm saying, like, there you have to unite on a single progressive candidate. Oh, these do damage. Holy shit. Anyway, the melon that you need is the one up top. So, yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. But I really hope progressives would win, you know, would win these races. Oh, oh shit. What the hell is this guy doing here? Ah, oh, shit. I was about to stop him. Ah, oh, fuck, I'm dying. <laughs> so, what else to talk about? I guess that's it for... regarding... you know, Democrats and stuff. Ah, oh, shit, I was about to spray him. Fuck. I don't care if I die. Let me go talk to the guys that do the melon thing. 